Hello and welcome. This is Stevenson News at 5. We begin with the war against drug trafficking as operatives of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency arrested the Brazilian returnee at the Inam de Azequa International Airport in Abuja for importing 92 wraps of cocaine. In a statement by the NDLEA spokesman, Femi Baba Femi, the suspect claimed to have left Nigeria to Mozambique in 2004 and finally relocated to Brazil in 2017, where he obtained a residence permit before deciding to import the illicit substance of a four, for a $4,000 fee. The settlement also disclosed that a 42-year-old man was arrested at the Malam Aminu Kano International Airport for attempting to export a consignment of a new psychoactive substance to Saudi Arabia. The spokesman also noted that in the course of the week, at least 1 million tablets of tramadol were seized. Now, the federal government has taken the Academic Staff Union of Universities to the National Industrial Court over lingering strike. Well, this is contained in a letter from the Minister of Labor and Employment, Chris Ngege, dated 8th September. In the letter, Chris Ngege said the referee was raised in line with the power vested in him by the Trade Dispute Resolution Mechanism and the provision of Section 17 of the Trade Dispute Act of 2004. ASU began an indefinite strike on the 14th of February, and the many negotiations between it and the government have not been able to end the industrial action. President of ASU, Manolo Sodeke, did not pick his cause when TVC News sought his reaction to government's action, but a top union leader said the lecturers await court's decision on the matter. And now to Ogun State, where government says it has commenced critical initiatives and reforms toward revamping the education sector. The Commissioner for Education, Science and Technology, Abayomi Arigbabu, made this note while briefing journalists and stakeholders on the various achievements of the current administration in the sector, especially on the examination process section. He said the state school flagship initiatives were introduced to ensure the decongestion of students' population and improve teaching and learning process across the state, noting that more than 960 classrooms have been renovated by the administration. We have set up a vibrant examination processing unit which now efficiently handles the entire examination procedure throughout the state with the aid of appropriate technology integration. And it is from that particular unit that we produce all the answer booklets that were used for examination throughout the state, over 2 million. That is the first time that will happen in the history of this state and in the history of any state ministry of education in Nigeria. In Enugu, the state government has commenced the construction of a new University of Medicine and Basic Science. The Citadel of Knowledge is located at Igbo Eno in Oba local government area. Bami Deliajai reports. Yearly, millions of Nigerian youth write the university entrance examination. That means the search for knowledge is on the increase. Despite intermittent strike by university unions, increased attacks on schools by government, amongst others. But that seems not to be the source of worry for Enugu State Governor, Ifai Uguayi. <laughs> to ensure Enugu State retains its lead in the education sector, the state government constructs a new University of Medicine and Basic Sciences, which was recently accredited by the Nigerian University Commissions, NUC. Today, the principal officers, starting from the VC, have come to assume the resume work here. Interventions of a uh, uh, third fund, interventions of needs, the educational needs. That is why we're having that block. An administrative block already completely roofed. And of course, the first hospital built here is this, the specialist hospital, and it's fully equipped. While inspecting the progress of works on the institution, the newly appointed vice chancellor and his team appreciated the state government investment in this school. This institution must be positioned in such a way that every parent will be willing to send his child here. The facilities, the infrastructure facilities are there. And then the management team, the experienced people, I'm very, very confident with the people, uh, the, the principal officers of the university. 
we are now going forward to uh, get the best. The delegation that visited the site say the state government investment in the school will enhance the training of more qualified students in medical profession. Bamindelia Jaye, TVC News, Enugu. Parents have been advised to be more vigilant towards behavioral changes in their children, which might be due to bullying. Child rights activists raised concern about effects of bullying at an event in Lagos. TVC News correspondent Fufilas Elama reports. Bullying is said to be a dangerous and life-threatening practice that vulnerable children can find hard to cope. Sadly, this has led to cases of disturbing mental and physical conditions for affected victims. The tragic death of a junior secondary school two student of Dewan College, Lagos, Sylvester Ramoni, who was allegedly tortured by some seniors, rekindled conversations about the issue that seems to have been overlooked over the years. According to Crisis Prevention Institute, one in ten children is bullied daily, while one in five victims suffer bullying once or twice a month. This informed the establishment of these festival tagged Unusual Fest to address the trend and give young ones the needed information to tackle it. I do understand that Nigerians do not have the orientation that they are supposed to have on this set topic. So I was like, why not have a conversation? I usually just have Instagram posts once in a while. I wake up every morning, talk on my Instagram stories. But I was like, how about you bring people to a place every year and let's talk about this. And I'm sure that with what they take from here, there is no way bullying would not reduce. It's something that we as humans should be conscious of, first of, and should also know how to handle. Now with children, because first thing you need to instill in them is to one, know that they're human, two, they're not above mistakes, um, three, to be empathic toward the, towards the next man. Parents were not left out of the event as they were advised to give their children the freedom of expression required to open up on such matters. The place of parents is to give their children the necessary equipment, and I'm not talking about tools now, to equip them to be strong, to be courageous, to speak to them. Like I was telling the parents in my own class, like you need to create an atmosphere where your children can talk to you. There's a lot of the habits that we have as um, adults with our friends really does transfer to what our kids see. So if you have negative friendships as an adult, a lot of times if you start seeing your kids having negative friendships, it, you probably have to self-reflect a little. It is said that a child who is encouraged and nurtured is likely to have more self-esteem and confidence. Experts believe that this can reduce the likelihood of them being bullied. Theophilus Ilama, TVC News. Lagos. And now to Taraba State, where Governor Darius Ishaku has inaugurated the administrative complex of the State Minister of Agriculture and Natural Resources. The new facility is expected to enhance the social economic growth and act as a research center for students studying fishery at the state set tertiary, uh, tertiary institutions of learning. Correspondent Wolabi Adenusi has more. Taraba is an agrarian state whose potential, if well harmonized, can meet the nation's food demands. This is why agriculture has been prioritized by Governor Darius Ishaku's administration, unlike other previous administrations in the state. The agriculture policies initiated and implemented are meant to boost, improve food security in the state and in the country in particular. In Taraba State, Good road networks were constructed to link various agrarian communities to town and markets. Also, farmers are given seedlings, fertilizers, chemicals, cassava seeds, rice, mechanized farming implements, soft loans, and many more incentives to make agriculture attractive. At this event, the governor is inaugurating the administrative complex for the State Ministry of Agriculture to provide an enabling business environment and improve the condition of service for the ministry's employees. Thereby commissioning the glory of God and to the service of humanity. Amen. Amen. The State Governor Darius Ishaku says the office complex also also has a cutting-edge aquaculture facility 
that will act as a prototype fish farm to promote fish farming amid the state needs for meat and protein. The facilities when commissioned and put to use will, apart from improving socio-economic development of the state, serve as a research center for fisheries students from our tertiary institutions. The Ministry of Permanent Secretary thanked the governor for the gesture. He says the ultra-modern aquaculture facility and laboratory will enhance the efficiency of the ministry and significantly improve the contribution of the state to the socio-economic development of the state as well as to increase internally generated revenue. Improving the socio-economic development of the state as well as both internally generated revenue of the state. The high point of the program was the former inauguration of the administrative block, Fish Pond and the Boho. The complex is named after Governor Dara Sishaku in appreciation of his agricultural revolution policies in the state, which now serves as a new source of wealth creation for the youth. A group in Cross River has advocated the need to improve cocoa production in the country. This, they believe, will increase economic opportunities for government revenue and employment in the country. The group is projecting an initiative aiming at improving the livelihoods of cocoa farmers and their communities through the promotion of sustainable, entrepreneurial farming, improved productivity and community development. Some of the beneficia beneficiary, uh, beneficiaries who commended the initiative for its initiative called on government to come to their aid with provision of insecticides, to stop black port diseases. The intention of the company um, is to um, basically give back to the farmers. Um, they are the ones that are on the farm doing what is necessary um, to ensure that we have chocolates in, on our table. And um, it's important as a company to see how best can we sustain this um, trade. Um, among the top um, uh, cocoa producing countries in the world. Nigeria is ranked fifth. Um, so with kind of interventions like this and um, sustainability programs like this, it's bound to happen that uh, eventually if we continue this strength, uh, Nigeria will leap forward to be the number one um, in the world. And the challenges we have in our area is that uh, we need uh, financial support and uh, chemicals to spray our cocoa farms. Our farms, most of our farms are in cool that is damp area that needs strong uh, fungicides. To sanitize more of the farmers on how to make their farm do three times of what they are doing right now because um, if you say God should start planting we want to encroach in, uh, in um, the, the forest uh, kept for for the nature so there's no point we go into, into the forest so for a forest uh, deforestation. So the best way is um, going to lay us with um, stakeholders in cocoa, can, um, barricade, but other companies are doing it so that you can know how to teach the farmers on how to produce three times what they are producing right now in their farms. Bishop of the Metropolitan Diocese of Ikeja has advised politicians to be careful about what they do or what they present as manifesto, as Nigerians would come for them if they don't keep to their promise. He stated this at a Thanksgiving and Harvest Church service in Lagos. Senior correspondent Ivy Kano was there. It's a two-in-one service, Thanksgiving and Harvest. Farm produce were placed at the altar in appreciation as members worshipped. When a woman carries pregnancy, on the ninth month, that woman and the entire family, the whole world, expects delivery. So it's also the month of expectancy. That's how the Bishop of Lagos Central started his preaching, before focusing on the theme, Harvest of God's Faithfulness. Know that the Lord, your God, the faithful God, who keeps covenant and mercy for a thousand generations with those who love him and keep his commandments.
Former military governor of Lagos State, late Rear Admiral Ndubisi Kano, was given a posthumous award for his immense contribution and dedication to the church. He contributed a lot to the development of this uh, diocese. Like I said before, um, this diocese was set up five years ago. It was just a mere church here and it's grown. And um, uh, that's what he has done for everybody. The Bishop Metropolitan Diocese of Ikeja had some advice for presidential candidates in the forthcoming general election. You are coming around to canvass for a vote now. After election, nobody will see you again. But whoever comes in 2023, we will see you by fossil because we come after you. We'll be talking to the press. We will not leave you. So all your promises, that if there are some you think you cannot do, don't promise. But anyone you promise, we will follow you and we ensure that you do it. But if you continue the way you are going, we will see some of you. People will stone you. I'm telling you, if care is not taken. He says voters shouldn't be swayed by what he described as empty promises by politicians. Ivy Kano, TVC News, Lagos. The Lagos State chapter of the Ohanese Indigo has inaugurated its new leadership led by Sunday Usai. The new president was presented a certificate alongside other elected members by the President General Ohanese Indigo Worldwide Ambassador George Obiozo during a ceremony in Lagos. He pledged firm support for the government and people of the state. He also promised to mend the disunity which he claimed was brought about by the past leadership. Mr. Osai further appealed to every ego in Lagos to return to the fold and join hands to serve Indigo in Lagos, stating that, quote, in this administration, the common cause of ego shall be our collective achievement, end quote. He commended Ohanese and all whose efforts ensured a credible and successful election without acrimony. It is like a day that has elevated me to a vintage position where I have the opportunity to affect my good program for the betterment of the Igbos. Making sure that there is unity among the Igbos. There is also a plan to register all the children's men and the women of Igbo extraction in a way that Oranese becomes their marketer. Osai, Chief Osai from Enugu State, is the leader of Oranese Ndibo, President General Oranese Ndibo, Lagos. You know, the way we structure, structure this thing is that it goes from state to state. From Ebony, it's going to Enugu. Enugu. Enugu has it now. After Enugu now, it goes to Delta State. And then it goes back to Anambra. It will just continue. Every four years, it's rotational. Everybody knows it. As for Nigeria, the procession of Queen Elizabeth II has now reached the Palace of Holyrood House in Edinburgh, which is the end of today's six-hour journey. The coffin will remain at Holyrood House overnight and it will proceed to St. Gars Cathedral on Monday afternoon. The coffin will remain on that continuous video for 24 hours with the public able to pay their respects. Meanwhile, in England, people are making their way to Windsor Castle and Buckingham Palace in order to lay flowers and remember the Queen. The coffin will arrive in London on Tuesday and the Queen will lie in state at Westminster Hall from West Day. The Queen's funeral will be held in London's Westminster Abbey on Monday, 19th September. It will be a bank holiday. People will be given the chance to pay their respects to the Queen as her body will be placed in the Palace of Holyrood House in Westminster Hall for them to see a coffin, a tradition known as lying in state. The funeral service will be held in Westminster Abbey and she will be laid to rest in Windsor. Finally, on the news, the traditional ruler of the Siloku Kingdom in Delta State, Obi Unduka Iziguna II, has condoled the Great Britain over the death of the longest serving monarch, Queen Elizabeth II. The monarch spoke during a festival to mark the end of the famine season. Ikina Meiji reports. The Seluku Kingdom is one of the oldest dynasties in Delta State, and the Obi Ndoka Ezaaguna II 
is the 20th traditional ruler of this ancient kingdom and they pride themselves in their rich traditional heritage which have passed from one generation to another with their Ine festival celebrated annually. Iseloku is the headquarters of Aniocha North local government area of Delta State and it is where the permanent orientation camp of the National Youth Service Corps is situated. Here, the people are predominantly farmers with vast arable land and they take pride in their rich cultural heritage which depicts their uniqueness and is evident in their ancestral roots from Benin Kingdom and the Igbo ethnic group. The Ine festival is to celebrate the harvest season after a successful farming period. Sons and daughters of the Asian Kingdom come from far and near to participate in what is the biggest celebration in their land. The Yasere is an aeronautic engineer and an illustrious son of the kingdom based in the United States, but he has traveled back home to celebrate with his people. We don't want our tradition to die away, so we're trying to keep it up. You know, it's a special tradition. So, in a, before they say uh, uh, it's uh, church people, it's not uh, about church, it's, it's a local tradition. It's very colorful tradition. So, and I'm going to continue doing it. I travel all the way from US for this. Festivities here start with the arrival of the chiefs to the palace with different dance groups accompanying them and several cannon shots are fired. The chiefs are here to pay homage to the royal majesty who had spent the last five days in solitary confinement to intercede for the people as it is required by their customs and tradition. He also has a message for his people. You have gone through a successful harvest season and we are looking forward to a bountiful harvest in the following season. And I wish each and everybody well and hopefully going into my seventh year, all praise to God, let everyone, elders, chiefs, youths alike prepare. The young king consoles with the United Kingdom over the death of their 96-year-old monarch. I wish to send my message to the British people who are this time mourning the longest serving monarch in their history to take heart and be brave. In as much as we pay respect to her memory, they should also realize that there is a new dawn and each and every one of them should look forward to the future as we all should. Cannon shots were fired as the king, in company of his chiefs, stepped out of the palace to greet his people who were delighted to see him after spending a few days in isolation. One of the uniqueness of this Ine festival is the weird dressing by the people. I'm here with one of them who is dressed in police uniform. Wearing it is not just because I want to wear a police uniform. I wear it just to justify and crucify the unseen and the unjust people in this town. Perpetrating crime and evil acts. Bring that to judgment. You are allowed to do anything virtually. Nobody is going to arrest you. They say we are fulfilling our tradition. We are beyond the law. There's something they can even say funny things about the Obi himself, but only for today. The peculiar cultural heritage of the Iseluku people is demonstrated here with the Ine Festival, the biggest event in the agrarian community inhabited by a people who have lived together for centuries. Ikenna Amechi, TVC News, Iseluku, Delta State.